Yeah. Who, uh, I'd like to introduce you to Sam Chi and Leslie uh, Lauren Hassel. Um, they're from Robogals and they're talking to us this afternoon about using Lego. Cool. <laughs> Lego. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Brilliant. Um, hi everyone, as Robin said, my name's Sam and I'm the Chief Operations Officer of um, RoboWells Global. But I started out as the training manager of RoboWells Canberra and hopefully by the end of this presentation those terms will actually make sense to you. Um, and I'm Lauren, um, I'm at the moment the Regional Director for um, Australia Pacific, Asia Pacific, including Australia, um, but I used to be the President for um, RoboGirls Canberra. So we're here on behalf of RoboGirls Canberra today to talk to you about what RoboGirls is and how you can get involved. So, a um, bit of a background, as I'm sure you guys know, um, there's a severe lack of engineers um, compared to demand. There's only 6,000 uh, 6, engineering students that graduate each year, while 8,000 retire. Um, and on top of that, there's only 10% of engineers that are actually female. So, um, in response to that, RoboGirls was created with the purpose to substantially increase the number of young women pursuing engineering in their tertiary studies and careers. So you may ask why, uh, well how do we do this? Um, our main activity is sending university student volunteers um, into high schools to conduct robotics workshops. So we use um, the Lego NXT robots, some of you might have played with them before, they're a good fun bit of technology. Um, and we go into high schools and just kind of give them a bit of an interactive, hands-on and fun way of getting involved in engineering and learning what engineering is about. Um, we also run community events, so um, I'll talk about these a little bit later, but um, just as a taster, sometimes um, some of our chapters will run, um, say, robotics workshops for homeschooled kids, or sometimes also go to st um, set up stalls for um, different events in the community. Um, and we also have two regional initiatives in Australia. The first one is the Science Challenge, um, which is a web-based um, kind of competition for girls aged 6 to 18. Um, they do a little bit of an engineering project in their backyard, film it, um, and the winners for each division get a trip to Melbourne to do fun things like go to the Victorian Space Agency and um, things like that. Um, and we also have the Rural and Regional Ambassadors Program where we um, train um, university students to go into remote areas of Australia um, and just take you know, a few robots with them, do some career talks, do some robotics workshops and give them an opportunity that they don't often get um, otherwise. So a little bit more about our robotics workshops. Um, we use fun hands-on programming activities to get them interested in kind of engineering and technology. Um, so sometimes these will be more competition based, so we'll run an obstacle challenge, an obstacle course and get them to you know, race against each other. Sometimes they're a bit more teamwork, so we'll get them to say, um, get their robot to move in the shape of a letter, Ta take a texter, tape a texter to the front of it, their robot and get them, the whole class, to write out a word um, or something like that. So we try and get them involved in kind of hands-on um, fun activities. Um, the Lego Mindstorms um, technology is actually really used for us this way because it's really, um, it's easy for them to learn, it's quite graphical and you know it's kind of drag drop and they really get a chance to in maybe a couple hours actually program something that they can see happening on, this, um, on their robot. Um, we also want to introduce engineering to them in a very fun and kind of pretty casual way. So we run in each of our workshops what we call the engineering chat. Um, so this will be, because all of our um, volunteers are university students and a lot of them are studying engineering, um, they can bring in something that they're interested in or bring in uh, maybe a project that they do in school um, or they've done in uni. Uh, for example, um, you can just, so we've had some volunteers bring in, um, say, a solar powered toy car and they can explain how that all works to the students. Um, some, you know, like a, an Arduino or something, something kind of fun and cool and interactive. Um, or even someone's brought in their lab book with biomaterials research um, and, you know, the kids love it. And that just gives the students um, a chance to kind of, on a really personal level, get to know engineering and get to know engineering students and people actually doing stuff in the field. And finally, um, we provide um, positive and relatable role models. So a lot of students in high schools won't actually get the chance to meet university students unless they have you know, an old, older sibling or someone who they know approximately who's involved in university. So um, this gives them um, a chance to talk to um, university students, especially if they're in kind of upper high school, because they often have a lot of questions about university, how it works, 
um, whether they should go or not, all that kind of question. Um, so that just gives them a chance to kind of get to know university students as real people rather than, you know, just people. Um, and lastly, we also we aim our workshops at girls aged 8 to 16. So we find at this age they're kind of slightly older so they can kind of understand what we're trying to bring to them. Um, and they're also at, at the upper end of that, they're, trying, they're starting to think about what they want to do for you know, the rest of their lives. Um, but they're also not old enough to have that really jaded kind of engineering that's completely for guys and it's a really male dominated field and they haven't got those kind of worries. Um, and it's also before they pick their um, subjects for um, final year, final years of school. So we can kind of get in there because that does affect whether they can do kind of engineering or technologically related fields in the future. Um, so Robo Girls is a global organisation. It was started in 2008 by our friend Marita Cheng, who was um, an undergraduate at Melbourne University at the time. And um, as you can see from the photo of Julia Gillard, she actually won Young Australian of the Year last year for her work um, with Robo Girls, which was really exciting for us. We got a lot of exposure. So, um, as I said before, we are obviously from um, the Australian region, which is part of the Asia, Asia Pacific. Um, and there are two other regions, um, which are the United Kingdom and North America, who are both starting up at the moment as well. Um, and we hold annual sign conferences in each region. So it stands for Seminars Inducting New Executives. And it's basically a way for us to get the volunteers to network with each other and talk to each other, um, get passionate about it together. And we also provide them a bit of a basis for, you know, this is how you talk to kids and if something goes wrong, this is what you do. And um, it's a good way to give them a basis for um, doing workshops. Um, in saying that, while we give them all these basic tools, each chapter is completely autonomous. They do what they want to do and how they want to do it. So um, really the signs are a way of sharing ideas and getting everyone to know each other so they know who to contact if they want to do something another way or take someone else's idea. Um, so that map is severely um, outdated. But we have eight proper chapters in the Asia Pacific region at the moment and we have some growing chapters um, who are yet to meet their girls quota before we consider them to be real chapters. But at the moment um, we have them all over Australia and we've got one in Tokyo as well. So um, the reason I'm telling you this is to say we're actually from one chapter and that's the Canberra chapter or the ANU chapter. Um, and we were founded in September 2011, so just over a year ago. There was um, six of us that started out and we, um, our first meeting together was at the Adelaide side. Um, and I think it's fair to say that we were all really impressed with how enthusiastic all these girls were and um, you know, how much they just wanted to change the field and all these things they wanted to do. So um, we learned a lot from them and we set our own goals. Um, and I think we did pretty well. At the end of the year we had over 300 members. Um, we ran a total of 40 workshops in the space of 12 months, which was at over 30 different schools. And we did three rural and regional road trips. Because um, the ACT doesn't really have any region or rural areas, we sort of went into New South Wales, but um, they were fine with that as well. And we taught a total of 732 students, of which 436 were girls. So um, we sort of like to compete with a lot of other chapters, and we do so by comparing how many girls we taught each year. <laughs> Well, so a little bit more about the events that um, the Canberra chapter um, runs. Um, like, like all other chapters, our main, our main thing is the workshops, but we also run events in the community and also members events. Um, so f some examples of stuff that we did in the community last year um, were the Kadara Robotics Challenge, which we, um, is a challenge for uh, high school students. We helped run that along with um, Young Engineers Australia and Kadara. Um, we also provided volunteers for RoboCup Junior um, and a few other events that were run at the ANU. And we also um, had a presence at the Canberra Careers Expo and the ANU Open Day, just bringing along a few robots and getting some people, you know, hopefully some people excited about engineering and robotics. Um, we also run members events. Um, so, for example, our NXT drop-ins. We know that these robots are a little bit expensive and not all of our members can just go and buy one and play with one. Um, so we open up a room for about three three or four hours, um, set up a whole lot of robots and um, laptops and just invite all our, um, all our members to come in and have a bit of a go at this, um, at playing with these robots. And we also run a couple of um, challenges and um, competitions, which is always fun to pit our best volunteers against each other. 
Um, we also run things like movie nights, which are a great um, opportunity for um, our volunteers to kind of meet each other and um, just kind of have a bit of good food and chillax, basically, and read, or watch a really, um, watch a really geeky movie normally. Um, and then we dress it up a bit for the Rob Girls Awards night where we invite our sponsors and some of our volunteers, um, make the place look a little bit nice and um, just recognize some of our volunteers who've, um, you know, volunteered for us 40, 50, even 60 hours in the year, which is pretty amazing. Um, and of course we run a lot of other kind of smaller events throughout the year, so barbecues and pancake days and well, if you're food related. Yeah. <laughs> if you're a university student and want free food and of course want to support the cause, but if you want free food, um, do join us, it's completely free. <laughs> Um, another thing that we like to do um, is actually, since we're doing all this stuff in the community and in schools, we want to see whether any of this is actually doing anything, if it's any of it's actually useful. Um, and we do that by evaluating our impact through surveys. So we survey all the students who um, come through our workshops. We also have run a couple of um, volunteer surveys and also teacher surveys. Um, we also look at our media exposure, so we were in about five um, local papers throughout last year, and Anusa also... Um, recognized us as the runner-up uh, for Best New Club last year, which is quite exciting because there are a lot of awesome clubs on campus. Um, so I'll explain a little bit about some of the um, responses that we got because that kind of shows what we're doing, um, hopefully. Um, there are four main groups that RoboGirls kind of exists for. The first is students, second are volunteers, third are the teachers, and the last is our sponsors. Um, so in the student surveys, um, we asked them what they enjoyed from the workshop, um, and then we asked them what they knew engineering was before and after. Um, in terms of what they enjoyed, most of their responses fall into two main themes. Um, the first one is um, the programming. They love to actually get hands-on um, you know, experience doing a little bit of programming that's not scary and hard and just a whole lot of like letters and numbers on the screen, but you know, they, they like to have that gentle um, introduction to it and we're hoping that a lot of them go off and do a whole lot of, you know, get into it um, properly afterwards. Um, and the second theme is that they just really love to meet the um, uni students. Um, like I said before, it's quite a unique opportunity for a lot of them. So um, being able to do that is something that they really, um, they really value. Um, the second lot of questions we asked is about what they knew about engineering before and after. So when we asked them before, a lot of them will say nothing or no, nothing at all. Um, some of them will tell us that it's about um, building bridges and driving trains. Um, we had one student who told us that everything she knew about engineering was from, um, from the Big Bang Theory. Um, so we get, a, we, we, we get quite excited when we get um, responses like af afterwards um, that you know, they've learned that engineering is more than just engines, which is really reassuring, um, and that it's actually about using science to make the world a better place. And one response that we actually get quite often, uh, more often than you'd think, is that it's not just for boys and it's not boring, which is exactly the kind of response that we want because our message is that engineering is fun, it's relevant, um, and you know, girls can do it too. So our volunteer um, feedback. Um, a lot of them just say, tell us that you know, they had a great time um, being able to share what they're passionate about, what they're interested in um, with these, all these um, high school students. Um, but we also get students who tell us that you know, it's really improved their skills, um, especially with, say, communication, to be able to um, work as a team uh, with other university volunteers. Um, you'll find that volunteers are often really great people um, because they actually do it because they love doing it. Um, they also improve their ability to communicate with, um, with students and be able to teach. Um, and we've actually also had some volunteers who said that you know, it was a really good opportunity for them to extend their communication skills in a language that wasn't their first. You know, to be able to get out of their comfort zone a bit and actually be doing something like this, it really builds their confidence. Um, and yeah, so they, so and it's also a great opportunity for them to network, just to meet um, other like-minded volunteers, and also um, our sponsors are all you know in the engineering industry. So um, yeah, but most of all, it's it's just fun. It's a great thing to do. Yeah, and then we also have asked a few teachers um, about what they like about our workshops. Um, they find that it's a really good opportunity for them to expand their curriculum, um, when, especially if this isn't something that they're that confident in kind of um, 
sharing with their students and also that having a group of kind of young volunteers coming in from outside ups the coolness factor of it somehow so um, their students are often engaged for quite a lot longer um, so um, at the same time we have sponsors and we've been really lucky to have um, the College of Engineering and Computer Science from ANU sponsor us this year and Nova Systems um, and we've just got an Accenture on board which is really great as well and they all attended our awards night and the um, volunteers got to chat with them which was a lot of fun um, and we, we have partnerships with the ANU Students Association, Engineering Students Association and the Computer Science Students Association um, and IEEE, ACT, Engineers Australia, Women in Technology. So um, basically, for anyone that might be interested in sponsorship, um, it's a great way to engage enthusiastic students um, and actually find, you know, some really well-rounded students who are to graduate the following year. Um, it's a great opportunity su to support a community initiative and to strengthen the field by actually teaching, you know, new kids how to, you know, how what engineering is about and how to get involved in it. Um, and. Yeah, I think that's what I wanted to say for that one. Um, so, why should you get involved? Um, well, it's strengthening the industry. Um, it's a great way to reach more people in not just the city, but in rural areas as well. Um, it's all about student education and the promotion of computer science, um, engineering, maths, technology, science subjects. Um, it's about meeting new people, volunteers meeting other volunteers, exposing themselves to industry, um, also giving an opportunity for students to meet um, university students and um, actually get to talk to them. Um, and it's a good way to extend yourself, to learn skills. Um, and also, I mean, as both of us started out in the chapter and we've both gone to global now, you can see that, um, you know, the enthusiasm just sort of grows and, and you get a lot more skills and experience as well. So if you are keen to get involved um, and you're a university student, um, definitely find your nearest chapter and sign up. You can volunteer at workshops, events, um, or you can just come along for the social aspect if you like too. There's clearly a lot of food involved. Um, and as well as that, Robo Girls Global is looking for a Chief Technology Officer and a Media Community Manager. So the Chief Technology Officer does a lot of um, the website turning you know, requests into coding and um, sourcing, all that type of stuff. And um, the Media and Community Manager does the internal newsletter, media contact, what else do they do? Just basically in charge of um, making sure that Rebel Girls has a positive community at all levels. Um, we try and give all of our um, people who are involved a lot of creativity, a lot of space to kind of um, figure out their own initiatives and pursue them. So it's a lot about empowering, it's about empowering high school students, volunteers and everyone involved. Yeah, so um, if you're interested in either of those positions, definitely either talk to Sam, she clearly knows more about both of those positions than I do, or um, look us up on our website, which I think is on the next slide. Um, and if you're not a student, definitely invite us to run a workshop, either with your kids or with your friends' kids or with um, maybe work at work, if everyone there has kids. Um, or form a partnership, we can do events together. We love doing things for our volunteers as well because, um, I mean, they deserve a bit of recognition. Um, and it's a good way, of course, to get students involved in your um, company and maybe look at um, who's actually worth recruiting the next year. So definitely come talk to us. Sam will be hanging around after this. Um, our website is robogals.org. You can sign up to Amplify, which is our um, newsletter, and we talk about what each chapter's achieved and what each region's doing. Um, and it's basically a way for each chapter to see how well they've done compared to everyone else and have a bit of friendly competition. Um, or you can email Sam, Sam at .org, or visit the website for your local chapter, um, or of course find us on Facebook. So, does anybody have any questions? Yep. Yeah. Oh, right. You can be there. Um, might be easier if you just repeat the question yes. so you can get that up. Who's got the microphone? Hi. Oh, okay. Um, I'm from the north of Adelaide. How do I get in touch with them because I want them at my school? Yeah, so the question was um, if you're in, you know, probably a more remote area, how can you contact Robo Girls to come visit schools in your area? Do you mean remote as in North Adelaide, as in, in the city, but That's just northern? Northern. Okay, yeah. cool. Um, so if you head over to robogirls.org, um, there's a link to all of our different chapters. Um, websites so you can head over to the Adelaide chapters website and then um, there'll be you know people
people that you can get in touch with there. Um, you can email probably their schools manager. It's probably a good um, good place to start, or just email the secretary because they'll the secretary generally knows who to put you in through to. Yeah, so, so you can definitely contact them on the website. And yeah, they'll, yeah, they'll, they'll, everyone's usually on their email every day. Which yeah, is good so, yeah. it's great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you go to primary schools. Yeah, so the question was um, that if we'll go to primary schools, so um, personally I've taught um, kids down to about four years old, um, which has been a bit interesting with the programming, but um, you know, year fives and sixes, they, they catch on just as quick as a lot of high school students, so yeah. yeah. <coughs> well, thanks for having us. Um, I hope you can tell everyone who we are and hopefully actually get to see you all again. Yeah, uh, we've got another. Did you bring any examples of the, the robots that you with the wind? <laughs> Yeah, so the question was, um, where are the robots? Um, they're currently locked in a cupboard in the computer, and computer science and engineering building. Um, and we couldn't get a hold of the guy, because it's the holidays at the moment, university holidays. So we couldn't get a hold of the guy with the key um, early enough. But, um, you know, if you, do, um, if you do want to see the robots and you're around Canberra, um, you know, email me. Yeah, your age limit is like eight. What if older girls, mid twenties, early thirties, want to get involved? Where do they go? So the question. The question oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry. The question was if you know girls outside the age range that we're targeting, what what can what can we do? So, okay, cool. So there there are a couple of um, things. So. Uh, workshops that tend to be, you know, for high school students, sometimes primary school, um, if you're in the ACT college as well, um, because that's kind of, we're trying to get people in from that kind of age group. Um, so if you are older and you want to get involved, um, consider, um, consider contacting your nearest chapter and um, all the volunteers get, you know, time with the robots as well, get to um, play around with the robots, get to learn actually how to how to use them and, you know, taking them out to schools and seeing, you know, I always love the moment when um, you've explained how to do the programming um, and then the kid puts the robot down on the ground, presses play and actually sees it do what you told it to do and, you know, there's that automatic transition from this is really boring and why are we doing this to this is really cool, can we make it do donuts? Um, so, you know, it, it's, a, it's so much, it's, I reckon it's more rewarding to be a volunteer. Um, and the last thing is, I talked about um, kind of regional initiatives. So another one that we're trying to start up in Australia, which we'll probably roll out sometime later this year, um, is we're looking at um, a kind of scheme where we will be able to encourage um, girls, because we've got the um, Royal Girls Science Challenge from um, kind of 6 to 18, and we're like, you know, there are people older that who, who want to be involved in this kind of thing too. So we're looking at putting some sort of program there to um, kind of put a bit of a framework and encourage, you know, people who are a bit older to, it'll be a little bit more individual, you'll have to, you know, try do, do a little bit more um, taking the initiative yourself, but we figured if you're 18, you should hopefully be able to do that, yeah. Um, so, like, sign up for the amplifier, you'll, you know, you'll learn about these things as, as we roll them out. Um, so that's a really good way to keep in touch too. CTO um, role or in the community and manager um, community and media role, um, do come talk to me because there are people I manage and I need people to do it because I don't have the expertise. <laughs> cool. Thank you.